So maybe not directly related, related to dog urination or water spills or anything, but when it comes to floating floors with the laminate and vinyl floating floors, so those are usually above concrete and they, they do have a gap. So how does that relate with mold? How does that work? Well, so a lot of these materials will, the manufacturer's instructions will tell people that they should be putting a plastic vapor barrier down. Okay. And that's gonna protect the material itself because the material can't be exposed to moisture in most cases something bad will happen <laughs> it'll it'll buckle or it'll I come unsticked or it'll so now that while that is good for the material itself the flooring it's not good for the air quality in the home right because we don't want to have a plastic vapor barrier on our concrete if the concrete especially is getting wet from the outside and a lot of these homes that are slabs whether it's a basement or first floor level, usually we don't see it on upper floors, sometimes in high rises, but that's not getting wet usually from the outside. So in the places where there's some exposed foundation that can get wet, if that gets wet just a little bit, the water wicks into the building, just like the slab is a giant sponge. And so that water gets wicked into the building enclosure and then it gets tries to dry to the inside and gets trapped by this plastic. The plastic is never clean. Uh, dirt and dust, we kind of talked about dust as biological matter, is a food source for mold. And so what we end up having, having happen is that the air quality is compromised because we end up with, with microscopic mold growing under the plastic. And the plastic under the floating floor, or whatever it is, is it may, it may be something you can't see, but it's never sealed, like completely hermetically air sealed. So air currents can get out. And then, so it's trapping moisture. And then that for many of my clients has been a, a cause of mold. And when we, when they go back and then take all that up, usually we can see some things outside that are contributing to low spots or gutter overflows or things that where we can see where the, the slab is taking on water. Yeah. Uh, when they remove that flooring, and that's usually what I suggest then is, okay, take up all your hardwood floors or your laminate floors or whatever it is. Oftentimes you can remove a threshold to see if there's plastic underneath. I was actually looking at homes last weekend and I took a picture of nicely done basement, but you could see going to the sub basement at the threshold, you could see that was definitely plastic under this floor. And, and then we could look at the outside and see that there's some drainage issues and suspect that if I were to buy that and want to live in it, I wouldn't have to rip that floor out. I don't, it doesn't matter how wonderful it looked. And so that's um, something to know for people that are highly sensitive. Tile would be the best solution. Okay, over yeah. I was going to ask what, what a better alternative would be besides the, that yes. combination. So ceramic or porcelain tile would be the best. And the the reason I've never seen mold growing under a slat, under a tile in the tile floor. I think part of the reason is because they're putting down mortar and so there's not actually not even a lot of air under there. What would happen is the moisture from the slab will wick up into the grout and into the mortar bed that this, that this tile is sitting on. And then it can dry at the grout joints. So some of these tiles that have very teeny tiny grout joints you know, I don't know. There's always something new to be, you know, that, that can be learned about and, and that we can see. But for the most part, what I'm seeing is that if the floor can dry through the, through the mortar grout joints, then it's not a problem, even if it's getting wet outside. So that would be the safest. And then you could seal concrete as well. They stain and seal it. We see that at a lot of fast food restaurants and yeah. grocery stores and probably big box stores as well, where the, you can be polished, they can stain it, it can look really pretty nice. That would be another solution. Okay. Well, that actually makes sense why tile is used more in like Florida and really humid and wet regions. I, I thought it was for like flooding purposes, but I have never thought that it's because I just didn't know that the moisture can dry up through the grout inside the house. That's actually pretty smart. Yeah, in fact, that's always where moisture is gonna dry. So it's dry. So anytime we get moisture in our buildings, typically the inside where we live is drier 
than the outside because especially in warm weather that's more comfortable for us and so in the winter it might be really dry inside because of heating it's debatable in really cold climates what which way the vapor drive is but definitely under a slab it's always going to be up 